Twilight was a huge part of my life growing up, but as an adult now, I have paid more attention to what Stephanie Meyer created in this world. Twilight is based in Washington State. La Push is home to the Colette tribe, both in Meyer's fictional world and our life. In the books, some of the young guys in the tribe become shapeshifters to protect the tribe from the cold ones, the vampires. However, Meyer twisted their story and instead of helping to combat and support indigenous communities, she helps in their erasure. Now, when people think of the Colette tribe, they think of what Meyer wrote in this story. They received many tourists, but not to be educated and honor the Colette tribe. Meyer received millions of dollars and not one cent was given to the tribe that she exploited for her gain. If you bought Midnight Sun or plan on buying the book, it's okay. It doesn't mean you accept what Meyer did. Many of us were so young and had no idea that this happened. What we can do is donate, if you can. Become more educated about this tribe and remind ourselves that the Quillette tribe are human beings and are nothing like what they are portrayed to be in the books. Hello, good morning, hello. Today it is August 5th and my book was just delivered. It was a day late, but it's here. And I am about to open it. I am so excited. Okay, sorry that it fell. This is so exciting. I'm so excited. <laughs> it's so pretty. I'm gonna go show it to my mom really fast. I haven't started reading, but I'm gonna take a sh quick shower and then I'm gonna read all night. I I've heard that it's better than Twilight, than the Twilight books, and that Edward's perspective is way better than Bella's. So I'm so excited. But yeah, I'm gonna go take a shower and then I'm gonna start reading. Okay, so it's 8.50. I'm about to start reading. is dedicated to all the readers who have been such a happy part of my life for the last 15 years. When we first met, many of you were young teenagers with bright, beautiful eyes, full of dreams for the future. I hope that in the years that have passed, you've all found your dreams and that the reality of them was even better than you'd hoped. initial thoughts are it's bringing back so many memories
August 6th and I just noticed on my last videos I kept on saying that it was July so I didn't even pay attention to the months so sorry it was definitely August Get up on page 75 first of all I want to say that I do I love the cover it's a pomegranate it just makes me feel it makes it just makes me want to like try to like eat some pomegranate right now because it looks so good it looks so tasty basically the same thing as Twilight just in from the eyes of Edward so we're getting to see everyone's thoughts I didn't know that Jessica and the rest of the girls had so many negative thoughts about Bella I started reading this the book it was very nostalgic it reminded me of what was I was I in high school or middle school yeah I think yeah it was high school I just remembered being in high school and devouring all the books in one day. just loved um, Stephanie Meyer's little note in the beginning of the book and it just made me kind of like cry because it's just very nostalgic and it reminded me a lot of um, memories when I was a teen and when I was reading the books. She dedicates this book to all the readers who have been part of her life for the last 15 years. I think I'm going to like Edward's perspective more than Bella's. See a lot of Edward's mind and how he's able to read other people's minds. I love Edward already. I used to be team Jacob back in my teen days but I think I'm changing to team Edward. We get to see how Edward first starts hating Bella because he has such a deep hatred for her because he can't control himself and we, we see his initial thoughts when he sees her in the classroom when she's about to sit next to him and he's thinking of many ways of killing her he feels hate and irritation towards Bella because of that reason so he stopped breathing for an hour um, so he wouldn't kill her I also see the accident part from his point of view from his eyes <laughs> And we really get to see how it exactly happened. We also get to see another character. Her name is Tanya, and I guess um, Edward rejected her. Also get to know why his eyes changed color. I don't think this was um, explained in Twilight. So when his eyes turn black, it means that he's hungry for blood. And when his eyes turn um, warm gold, that means that he is swimming with blood. So he's not hungry he has drank enough blood. But we could see Edward's character development right from the beginning towards Bella, the character, and we see that he has so much hatred and irritation towards her, and then this turns into so much curios curiosity towards her. He's not able to see, hear the exact words that Charlie is saying, so they were partially concealed and he could only um, make out the tone of them so he didn't know exactly what words Charlie was saying he's thinking maybe um, Bella and Charlie have something in common that he's not that he's not able to know Bella's thoughts or know Charlie's exact words right now it is 2 30 p.m. I'm going to read a little bit more of Midnight Sun I want to take it slow I don't want to read this in one day I actually want to take notes and understand it and love it and just take my time with it because it's just a book that brings back so many memories and it reminds me of my teenage years so I'm going to take it slow and just enjoy the writing and enjoy Edward's perspective
is now 7 39 p.m read a few pages in the morning and then i read a few more in the afternoon and then i try to go outside and read but i couldn't really concentrate and right now um i'm gonna start reading again and i'm gonna read all night until maybe 10 p.m because i'm really i'm trying to go to sleep today early i ended up on page 90. i only read around like 20 pages all day so i'm hoping that i can get some reading done before um it gets late i will definitely update you guys a little bit later black tea so I'm gonna be trying this one into my pjs and i'm going to read for a couple of hours i have my tea with me so let's see how it tastes i like it it has that sweet flavor yummy i am on page 111 i just finished reading the parts where edward was eavesdropping where um the other guys were asking her to the dance and she denied she denied them because supposedly she was going out of town and Edward was eavesdropping and he was actually happy that she denied all of them. So I'm going to continue reading. I will update you guys continuously while reading. loves laughing, doesn't he? <laughs> Alright, so it is now 12 a.m. I ended up on page 158, chapter 8. And I am going to bed now. Very interesting to see Edward's point of view. Um, events that happened in Twilight from his perspective. He has this thirst and curiosity for Bella, which we don't really see in Twilight.
Hello guys, it's now, it's now Friday, um, it is currently 5 o'clock p.m. I haven't had um, a, the chance to update you guys with my reading with Midnight Sun. So far, I am, I left off like on chapter 8 last night and I just read a little bit more and I am now on chapter 9 page 183. I haven't done any reading today. Edward sees Alice's future and both of them see that he falls in love with Bella and then Bella becomes a vampire and he does not want that to happen. First he wants to avoid her to change the future that they saw in Alice's visions but then his love for her grows incredibly strong. After him knowing that he couldn't use the power of mind reading with her because he's not able to read her mind so that attracted him and eventually he become he falls in love with bella he decides to give in and warn her and give her as much truth as she deserves and if she ran away and she did not want to be with him then he would um leave i feel like i'm really liking edward's character because he's a very anxious person but at the same time he's very funny I think he has he's he laughs all the time especially on in um serious situation edward begins begins to really care for bella he says that bella deserves happiness and love whoever she chooses to out of anything hurting bella is into intolerable for him because he doesn't want anything to hurt bella i really love emmett he's another funny guy and um Alice as well. She's like the backbone of the family after Carolyle. Through Edward's perspective, we also see that he hates Mike Newton's guts because Mike is trying to get with Bella and Bella just doesn't pay attention to him. But we see how Edward always constantly thinks about killing Mike and enjoying it. Also see that Jessica hates Bella in a way because I guess she gets she's pretty and edward even says that he's happy that um bella actually has a real friend which is angela and she's the nice one i'm going to read for maybe a couple of minutes and then i will update you guys I received a book mail this morning from Phil Rosen. And it's everywhere but home. And here's the little synopsis in the back. And I can't wait to read it. day ever but I did take midnight sun and I was reading it um, in the car on my way to the store and I got to page 256 I am on chapter 12 called complications I'm starting to notice that 
there are a lot of different scenes than Twilight. I mean, I understand because um, it's Edward's perspective and he saw different things that Bella didn't see. The right character is Emmett, I feel. He's really funny and Edward, he grew on me a lot. It's the fact that he is like thirsty for Bella and I am on the part where Edward and Bella, where Bella already knows that Edward's a vampire and she is not scared about it and Edward's like surprised and that. I'm gonna keep reading but first I'm gonna work out and then I'm gonna wash my body and then I'm gonna read for the rest of the night and I will update you guys a little bit later. <laughs> Sunday, August 9th. Yesterday I left off on page 330. I am on chapter 16 and it's called The Knot. I have learned so many new things about Edward that were not mentioned in Twilight and if they were mentioned I probably forgot because it's been a year that I haven't reread Twilight. You can see why there's a pomegranate in the cover of the book. On page 187 it mentions Persephone. I did my research on this and Persephone. She was a Greek goddess of vegetation and she was wife of Hades with whom he ruled the world. Hades falls in love with Persephone and takes her to his underworld and there she falls in love with him. Persephone eats six seeds of the fruit from the underworld which is the pomegranate. The mother of Persephone, she makes a deal with Hades and she only ate six seeds from the pomegranate. Persephone only needs to stay with Hades for six months and when when Persephone stays with Hades, that means that there are no crops, but when she leaves the underworld, when the six months pass, um, the crops start growing again. That's what Edward compares himself to Hades, who falls in love with the goddess. Edward falls in love with Bella, who has no business um, going into his underworld. Bella does go to his underworld. He will doom her life and nothing will be the same just exactly the same way as Persephone. Persephone's crops were not growing when she was in the underworld. It's more pages, the pomegranate is mentioned again, and I think it's pretty interesting. Um, if we can see in the Twilight book, there's an apple in the front of the cover. I feel like the pomegranate coincides with the apple of the cover of the Twilight book because they're both forbidden fruits. The apple from Adam and Eve, they were forbidden fruits and the pomegranate is also a forbidden fruit from the underworld. So far, I am on the page where Edward's gonna take Bella to the meadow and he's gonna show her his real self. It's gonna be a sunny day, so he's gonna show Bella how he looks when he's out there in the sun. If we can remember from the movie Twilight, when he stepped out into the sun, he was super glowy and just sparkling. The, this book portrays vampires to be beautiful, sparkling, and handsome as Edward. So I'm going to keep reading. Hopefully I'm able to finish this by today. I usually I'm able to read like 100 pages every day, so I'm probably not going to be able to finish it. Now I'm going to make some pizza bagels. So I will update you guys as soon as I read some more. Alright, so we're going to need some marinara sauce. Also some mozzarella. We also have some bagels. And also some pepperoni.
so it is now Monday afternoon. It is currently 6 45 p.m. For some reason when I was reading this chapter, it was super boring. I just felt like it kept repeating the same thing over and over again. I'm on chapter 17 and I feel like that's the longest chapter ever. Currently on ch page 371. I only read like maybe 20 pages. So this is the end of the video. I finished Midnight Sun. These are all the sticky notes, the annotating that I did. And I have to say that I did enjoy it. I loved it. Edward did not become my favorite because he's freaking weird. Make me laugh. We had a good time. I had a good time while reading. It was really good. But then it was boring in some chapters and that were like completely long. We learned a lot of things about Twilight. Um, for example, the CD that Bella had in her truck was Linkin Park, the album Hybrid Theory, and that's the best album ever. A lot of spelling errors, that's what I feel. It was way too long. I feel like there were a lot of unnecessary things that and I did not really care about. But throughout the end, it was amazing. It was great um, knowing Edward's thoughts during the baseball game. Um, knowing everyone's thoughts during the baseball game because Edward, he reads minds, obviously. But from this book was how much Edward and Bella love each other. Um, it was cringe at times, but that's what romances are, right? And it just makes me feel like having a vampire boyfriend but it's just a fantasy and it's never gonna happen all right thank you guys for watching this video we're almost to a thousand subscribers that is amazing thank you guys for being here thank you for watching my videos if you got this far thank you and bye bye